In today's video, I will share with you why using UV filters in front of your lens is such an awful idea and why it's actually best to take them off and throw them away. And if you watch till the end, I will share with you what you can do instead to protect your lenses. I must admit, I didn't expect much when I bought these two UV filters to test in this video, but the results I got were actually quite a bit more shocking than even what I had imagined. So let's take a look. You can be the best photographer in the world, have the best gear and the perfect setting styled in to capture the moment. Yet, if you use one of these in front of your lenses, you're very unlikely to actually take great images. I know that many of you guys have been sold a UV filter as the protection for your front element. And in theory, that's a great idea. However, you've never been told the full truth about UV filters. Don't get me wrong. They definitely protect the front element of your lenses and they make the stores who sell them to you a lot of extra money, but they come with a steep downside for you as the photographer. To settle the UV filter debate once and for all, I went ahead and bought two UV filters. One cheap one for about 30 Aussie dollars, one expensive one for a whopping 100 Aussie dollars. Because in theory at least, the more expensive one should also work much better, right? Equipped with two filters, my 100 to 500 millimeter lens, an R5 and an R7, I went to my local lake to have a fun little photo shoot. And keep in mind, the images I'm gonna show you now were all taken with the same $5,000 lens. The only difference between the files will be that some have the UV filter added and some will be taken with the bare lens. The first image I prepared for you is of this preening white ibis, just the bare lens, 100 to 500 millimeter. And if we zoom into that to 100%, we see amazing sharpness and details. So let's put that image side by side with an image taken with the UV filter. Zoomed out, we don't really see much of a difference between the two files, but when we zoom in now to 100%, we see a dramatic difference. The image with the UV filter on the right hand side just looks quite odd. It looks like someone has to run some too strong noise reduction on it or some kind of blur filter. There's hardly any details and the sharpness is also gone for the most part. The next images I prepared for you of this very strange Aussie bird called a magpie goose. So here the first image, stunning sharpness, stunning details and all around fantastic portrait. Now side by side with the expensive UV filter, when we zoom in to 100% we see a dramatic difference in sharpness and details. And now for comparison purposes I also added the cheaper UV filter to my lens and to my surprise it actually performed a little bit better than the expensive one. Don't get me wrong, neither filter performed very well. And lastly, I thought, what happens when I have a little bit more distance between me and the bird? So I shot the cattle egret standing on top of the rookery, a little bit further away. One with the pure lens, again, great sharpness, great details. And then the one with the more expensive UV filter, again, just had no details no sharpness, an all around kind of awful image that looks like it was taken with a $50 kit lens. So now that we know that it's best to not use UV filters, it's time to learn how to get the most out of your now even sharper raw files. And this is where I would love to help you with my Pro Sets and Masterclass. With my Pro Sets, I enable you with just one click to transform your raw files from a dull, boring raw file into a great, vibrant starting point for the editing process. And in my masterclass, I teach you step by step all the necessary things you need to know in Photoshop to make your own images look amazing. So if this is of interest to you, make sure to check this out down there in the description. When we think about it, it shouldn't actually come as a great surprise that we severely downgrade image quality when adding a cheaply made piece of glass in front of the high-end expensive glass of our lens. The front element of this 100 to 500 millimeter lens, for instance, has several coatings and the whole glass is designed with the design of the lens in mind and the physics of the lens. And if we add a UV filter to the front of here, we are messing with this winning formula. Essentially then you own a $5,000 lens, but by adding the UV filter, you get $50 images because the last piece of glass you're shooting through is this kind of filter. I use my gear every day and I'm definitely not careful with it. I have it with me in the field, it's on the tripod, being scratched by trees, I throw it in the car, I throw it in my backpack 
And in over 25 years of hardcore photography, I've never actually scratched the front element. So going by this history, it seems like the odds of me damaging my lens in the field are very, very small. And I much rather take perfectly sharp images every day than ruining my image quality for a little bit of extra protection that I may never actually need. In saying that, front elements are not cheap. A friend of mine had his replaced on a 100 to 500 millimeter lens and it was about $600 including labor. So breaking one of these is definitely not a fun thing to do. So now the question is, how can you actually protect your lens without using a nasty filter? And the answer is this, your lens hood. Most lenses come with a lens hood and you should use it all the time. They don't only protect your lenses, but also stop stray light coming into the lens, for instance, giving you better images. For me, the main reason I use the lens hood is definitely protection because I can put the lens in the car seat or in my backpack even without the protection cap on and nothing really happens to the lens because the distance between the front of the lens hood and the lens is so large that not many things actually get in there. And even if I was to drop this lens, it's very likely that the lens hood would take the majority of the fall, might break, but the rest of your lens would probably stay fine. So for me, lens hoods are the number one protection for lenses like this. Another thing we have is obviously these awesome lens caps. They're very easy to take on and off. And I would recommend to use these whenever you can, especially with shorter lenses that have much shorter lens hoods. On these big prime lenses like the 600 millimeter lens or the 100 to 500, the lens hoods are usually sufficiently large, but on the shorter lenses, using these protection caps is probably the best idea to protect the front element because they're so easy to take on and off and are also not very heavy and you can always have them with you in the field. And if you're not a fan of either one of those two options, there's also endless amounts of rubber and neoprene covers for the front elements of your lenses. This one here is for the big 600 millimeter lens, but there's a lot of smaller ones available as well that you can quickly just put over the front of your lens and easily protect it in the field. And even if you get into the unfortunate situation and scratch your front element, it's also not the end of the world. A little scratch will not show up in any of your images and it's really just the cosmetic damage. Especially on these long lenses, if you have even a quite large scratch, it will still not show up in your photos. So while it's not great to actually damage the front element of your lens, it's also not the end of the world. And in most cases, you don't actually have to replace this right away just because there's a little scratch. Now, some of you may still think that protecting the front element of your lenses is more important than getting the best image quality. If that's the case, I won't judge you and I can actually understand it because you're spending a lot of money to acquire this gear and you wanna protect it to the best of your ability. However, with this video, I wanted to make you at least aware that when you're using UV filters on your gear, you're running the risk of getting severely worse image quality out of otherwise perfectly fine gear. And in the end, ditching the UV filter might be the way to go to get the best photos possible with the gear that you spend so much money on. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that it gave you some food for thought. And if it did, please give me a thumbs up for the video. Let me know your thoughts about UV filters in the comments and subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys in the next video very soon. Bye.